It's really difficult to predict the future. If I could predict that, I'd probably be in a different profession altogether. But in reality, you know, the, the future is going to be very, very dynamic. I think there's going to be a lot of turbulence for various reasons. You know, there are macroeconomic changes that are happening. The political environment is changing, whether you look at a particular country or you look at a region. Uh, Asia has taken a definite prominence, but Asia has got a lot of challenges to kind of overcome too. Uh, so the, the future, I think, is, is going to be extremely dynamic. And so what you need, I believe, for leaders is folks who are going to be extremely versatile, being very confident, and having experiences which have been broader than just a particular environment, a particular sector, a particular uh, talent space. You, you need somebody who's going to be extremely dynamic through their experiences. I also think that somebody who's got experiences dealing with crises is going to be very critical. And today, in today's world, uh, when you think of a crisis from yesteryears, it's extremely different than the crises from today. In today's world, actually, every little minor issue gets blown out of proportion and goes viral because you got social media, you got a digital world, you got, you got an exponential impact that comes through that. So you need leaders who are very, very agile, flexible, and know how to react to certain issues. So it's going to be an exciting time for leadership, talent as they grow. And I think the future is going to be extremely exciting for us. Well, when you, when you think about crises, I think the leadership traits are very clear. You need somebody who is obviously going to be very strategic. And strategic is a very broad word, but basically what I mean is that they need to see beyond the crisis. They need to see the roadmap through the crisis, but also be thinking five years down the line. What have we learned from this particular crisis and how are we going to build that into our business? How are we going to build that into our organization plan? And how do we make sure that we can avert potential crises in the future? So being strategic is absolutely key. Um, being execution driven is the next thing. It's very important in a crisis to be very decisive, act fast, and you should be almost proactive as opposed to being reactive, which is very difficult because the nature of a crisis is that you have to be reactive. But I mean that the person, the leader, needs to be so, so dynamic so visionary that they need to react to the immediate crisis but also be proactive about maybe the ripple effects, maybe future crises that will come up. Lastly, I, I do believe that compassion is a very critical part of every leadership and, and particularly in a situation such as a crisis. In a crisis, I think somebody needs to be extremely compassionate, know what the person on the, on the ground is going through, know what the organization is going, to going through. So strategic, execution driven, compassion are all key aspects about leadership through crises. I've lived in the US, I've lived in China, Malaysia, Singapore and I've held global roles as well as regional roles in Asia Pacific and in North America. Um, I think India is particularly going through quite a change skill sets and maybe strategies that worked well in the West don't necessarily translate over here in the sense that in the West I think you know you have a clear strategy pulled out execution it works almost like clockwork because you've got metrics you've got levers you've got a lot of processes which will aid that execution in India I think we're still growing through uh, we're learning you know and strategies need to be dynamic so there is no one strategy that you can set today and say, look, we're going to implement this, you know, two months down the line, and that's the way, this is the blueprint for it. Your strategy almost needs to be checked every day. So there's a, there's a, there's a different degree of dynamism. So your leaders just need to be that much more energetic, that much more. They just need to be conditioned to be constantly looking at all of the different environments that go into affecting that strategy, whether it's internal, whether it's external, whether it's regulatory, whether it's your stakeholders, things are constantly changing. So once you've got that strategy, your implementation becomes that much more difficult because you've got to be constantly checking yourself, shifting, you know, making sure that your implementation is also shifting. 
So when you had a potential metric that's being put out there, your, your, your goalpost keeps changing all the time. And it's your job as a leader to constantly keep that goalpost you know, beyond a, beyond a point of expectation and making sure that you're always delivering a lot more. On top of that, you've got a lot of other issues such as organizational issues. I think in India, we're going through quite a change where, uh, you know, typical companies here tend to be very hierarchy driven. And hierarchy is the norm. So the leader says something and the entire organization moves. That takes time. What I'm trying to do with our organization and what I'm very excited about in AirAsia is that we have almost no hierarchy. And of course, you've got, you know, you got, your, your, got your layers, but there's no hierarchy. You know, anybody can go access their CEO, which is myself. Anybody can go talk to me. And execution is just that much more faster. Decisions are made almost instantly. I expect all of us to make decisions immediately. I'm not looking for a bunch of different reports. And this goes to us being really proactive. Make a decision, own it, react to it, and then correct it if necessary. But make sure that you're making your decisions and getting the entire organization to move with it. So there is that, there is a softer element of compassion, EQ, you know, of being able to engage people, get their emotions out, and make sure that they really buy into your, into your goals. But in India, I think it's just a, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity for any leader to come in here, you just need to be, you need to be this, this, this sprinter in a marathon, which is what somebody called me many, many years ago, and I truly believe in that. It is a marathon, you're thinking about the long game, and you're thinking about pacing yourself, but you gotta be a sprinter, because you gotta be focused on, in on your 100 meters. How am I gonna beat the next person in front of me, and how am I gonna set a new goal? How am I gonna set a world record for that 100 meters, and then do that all over again? And a very basic level, I hate status quo. I, I really, really hate status quo. I hate it when somebody comes up to me and says, this is the way it's done and this has always been the way it's done. Even if it is a successful result, I always believe that we can be always that much better. So in terms of my organization, and I, I guess you know, my, my expectation for leadership here in India is that I'm expecting people to constantly challenge what's done in the past. Be curious about how can we improve. Ask the what if questions. Ask why not. Or ask why? Why is this done? You know, you, you almost got to be like this this kid in you know from kindergarten who's going to ask you these very basic questions, and and I believe that it is critical because I think India is going through a big change. Everything from our political environment through the business environment to to even our social environment and our awareness around key issues, it's going through a huge change, and I think this is where the old fundamental norms or whether it's you know, colonial processes that have been still embedded in our legal processes, to all the way out to you know, business environment today, everything needs to be challenged. And I think the company and the leaders that do that are going to be in a unique position. It is, it is a position with a lot of risk. It is a position with a lot of downside, because you are going to have a lot of failures when you're going to hit a hurdle. But what I look for and what I believe in and what I live by every day is that when you, hit a, when you hit a barrier and you have a failure, I expect us to power through it. Pick yourself back up. Go do it again. Try it. Learn from the last time you fell down. Get up and do it again. The persistence. I, 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 you know, with India, I always mention one term, which is about energetic patience. You've got to be energetic all the time, but you've got to be patient about your results. That doesn't mean that you be complacent about your results. That doesn't mean that you expect or tolerate when somebody says, no, this will take time. I expect everyone to ask, why not? Why can't this be done faster? Why is this done in this particular way? So for me, it's about having that, that assertive nature and never accepting status quo. I believe leadership is very contextual. You know, and I, I think, you know, the, the type of leaders and the type of talent that you have in a particular segment is, is going to differ. So aviation is, is in, a, in a very unique state and, you know, things are changing dramatically. Um, it, it is an environment that is uh, uh, up for challenge and it's up for change in many, many different ways. And it's only as good as every heartbeat that we have and every, every brain that we have. Now, in terms of tools and how can we assess our, our, our leadership, 
understand? How can we help our talent grow? Look, I, I really believe in one fundamental thing. I believe in simplicity. So it needs to be as simple. I, I'm not somebody, I could throw a bunch of different jargons out here. I could throw acronyms out here. But I believe in simplicity. The, the person down at the ramp floor needs to understand how can he make it to management. So it's about being simplistic. So we currently, right now, in our, in our HR department, we actually call it people department, so PD. Our PD department, we have a bunch of different tools. We've got psychometrics, we've got, we got, we got coaching setups. But it's about really being simple. Our, our basic tool is we tend to throw people into challenges, tend to throw them into environments. So we believe in their potential, and we give them an opportunity. It's part of us being entrepreneurial, where we believe that people should bring up the drive. So I, I never go up to anybody in my organization and say, look, here's all, this is the suite of tools that we have for you. What would you like to use? Or here's what I think you should use. I'm expecting this person to actually go into a situation and come to me and say, look, I need help here, here, here. Or this is how I believe I can go groom myself out here. So our coaching tends to be done very much on the job, uh, it's never usually done by a manager because, you know, managers tend to be not the best coach because they, they tend to have their own biases and their own incentives. But um, coaching seems to be done by somebody that the person really gels with, that they feel with. So whether they really connect with me. You know, I actually have currently, I have a cabin crew. He's 21 and he's been, I, I spend time with him once a month because his goal is to become a CEO. And he said, look, you did it. You became a CEO when you were 32 of an aviation company. How can I get there? So I'm meeting him once a month, and, you know, and, and I just make it a point because here's somebody with a dream, and I want him to kind of achieve that. You know, when it comes to our pilot assessments, our recruitment, when it comes to cabin crew, we got psychometric tools where we're trying to get personality types and, and, and making sure that we're building a culture. But I think our culture really comes ultimately down to entrepreneurship, where people take an ownership in the company, and that's basically what I'm looking for. So in terms of tools, we keep it very simple uh, across the entire HR suite, you know, whether it comes to payroll, whether it comes to you know, your own benefits, tracking that, whether it comes to your EPF, anything like that. It, it ultimately comes down to just keeping it simple, where people can really understand, how can I get from point A to point B, and what do I need to do in my job?